So I'm not at a desk, which is great. The weather is awesome. And I'm actually sat on this. <laughs> This thing's fast. I've only ever fallen off once and there won't be a second time because I'm holding a camera right now. So a few people asked about the setup for my YouTube videos. That's what this video is. So let's get back there and I'll show you. Hey buddy. <laughs> Let's check it out. So this is the view that you're probably most used to seeing. Monitor, keyboard, mouse, a little bit of a backdrop, some lights. But why don't I just lift the blinds up so you can actually see what's going on behind the scenes a little bit more easy. So there we go, blinds are up. While I explain some of this, I gotta look at the monitor so I know what I'm pointing at. So if you see me flick between looking at you and looking at something else, it's the monitor. So over here, we've got two LG displays. I started off with this one, which is a 29 inch ultra wide displays. These things are really, really wide. And I love them because you can split them into two nice boxes. If you have a normal sized display that isn't ultra wide and you split it down the middle, your windows become a little bit squashed and some websites end up flicking into like mobile mode, like they're on an iPad or something. So having it this way is much better. Plus it works really good for editing videos. You get these big long timelines. So having a wide screen just makes sense. This one's 1440p, that one's just 1080. So I use that as a playback monitor. And this is the one that I edit on. And the difference between the 1440 and the 1080 is huge. So yeah, I love these. They're matte, they're not glossy, so they don't really get fingerprints. There's no reflections or anything. So that's that. There is a an arm in the back here that holds these two monitors up. Don't know if you can see it sticking out the top. There you go. Uh, while we're over here, you can see this light. So I do have these lights in the roof. This is just an IKEA light with IKEA smart bulbs, but they flicker. So if you were to shoot using those lights exclusively, you would see these moving lines coming down the screen. I'll put a shot in here so you can see what it's like. It's not very attractive. It's complex to fix, but it is fixable. So if you're stuck, you can fix that. This is my old key light. The key light's the one that really lights your face. That's the new key light. We'll get to that in a minute. This one is from Elgato, the company that makes the Stream Deck. It's a really good light. It doesn't flicker, so you don't get any lines on this whenever you're filming, but it's small and it's a little bit harsh compared to <laughs> Something like this, which is a new addition to the office slash studio. And I just pop it in there and it lights this wall, it just gives it a little bit of a warm glow. The light over in the corner behind that plant, I use the little light there. And because there's so much other light in the room, you don't see the flickering on that light. So that's why I settle for that. There is carpet here for sound damping. If you have an office that has a wooden floor, I recommend you throw a big rug down or put a carpet in. You'll get much better audio quality that way. So think about that. If you can't do that, what I do recommend is that you get some like clothes, like bathrobes or something on hangers and just sort of hang them up around the room. You could do something clever and hang them like off of this, for example, I've done that in the past, that works. It does a little bit of sound damping. You can sort of put them on stools and things around your room. I've even seen people film in their closet, in their clothes closet, and the audio quality is incredible. Here's the keyboard and mouse. Really, really good keyboard and mouse. I don't know why I haven't been using these for longer. I've always used Apple keyboards and mice. The mouse sucks, to be honest. Um, the little chargey things on the bottom, even if they put the little chargey thing on the front, it wouldn't beat this mouse. There's so many things that this mouse does, it's just mind blowing. You got this thumb scroller, which lets you scroll through the timeline on your footage, nice and easy, I love that. You got this magnetic scroll wheel on top. It's got two modes, you press this button and it goes into the two different modes. One is a traditional sort of bumpy scroll wheel and the other one is just 
it just goes and goes and goes. Keyboard is equally as good. This doesn't have the keys on the side because it was killing my shoulder, but you got all the usual buttons. You got multi-device support so you can flick between multiple computers. And it's just a nice, not too loud keyboard to type in. If I'm working in here and someone's sleeping next door, then they don't get woken up with some clickety clackety mechanical keyboard. I also have this felt pad for extra sound damping and also it's nice on your forearms, especially if you have a metal watch and you don't want that scratching on the desk, for example, this makes it way better. We should talk about the desk because this desk goes up and down electronically. Close my mind. Speaks for itself. This one's from FlexiSpot. You can get them from Ikea. You can get fully desks. Those are the sort of ones you see on YouTube quite a lot. I find this FlexiSpot one is really, really good. Solid top, to be honest. Um, and there's a motor underneath here and it just plugs into a normal wall socket. While we're under here, this is the Mac Mini and a whole bunch of cables. There's little you can do to avoid cables. Um, I should say that underneath here I have a small SSD drive which I will pull out in a while. You can just see it here. So this is it. In there is an M.2 card which is a super high speed card and I use that as a hard drive for Final Cut Pro so I put all my footage onto there and that's what you're seeing here. This is Final Cut Pro. It's the editing software. It's really, really fast. It's blazing fast. If you want to get something that fast that isn't an M.2 card, it's going to cost you three or four times the amount of money. I'll leave links to these in the description. They might not make these exact ones anymore, but you'll be able to get the idea and go and build your own. Really, really cheap, really easy and really fast. So then we got a Logitech camera here. That's the Logi Stream Cam, I think it's called. It's 1080p, 60 frames per second. It's got microphones built into it. It's pretty cool. It's nice and easy. You guys have seen this before when I've done some tutorials where there's a little circle on the screen and you can see my face. All right, let's talk about this arm. This is another Elgato product, same company that makes this light. This is their flex mount, I think it's called, arm. And this is, I think it's this large version. You can get a medium one as well. So you get this bar and you can see these two twisty nut type things here, these tighteners. This thing goes way up. You can extend it way overhead. It's huge. Um, and then it has this articulating arm. So if I, whoop, if I loosen these, you can see you can rotate all this sort of. And what I do is I take the microphone that's on the top of this camera and that goes on here and it's off camera but it's pointing at my mouth and that gives me decent audio. That microphone is connected via USB-C straight into the Mac Mini underneath. Um, I don't use an audio capture device like a Zoom or anything like that. I use my screen recording software which is CleanShot. It's a little app for the Mac. I love it. So when you start a recording of the screen that is recording the microphone and that's how I work. I record the video here on this camera or on this one, and I'll show you those in a minute. And then I create a multicam clip in Final Cut Pro to sync those two audio video tracks together. That's how that works. Uh, camera wise, this is the camera I've been using a lot lately. Uh, it's the Sony ZV-E10. It has, I, I appreciate you can't see it right now, so maybe I'll just do it like this. There you go, that's exactly what I'm seeing. So this one is the Sony ZV-E10. This is just the kit lens, a little 16 to 50 lens. I put the little green sticker there with the X to remind me to look here and not look at myself on the screen because it's kind of obvious, even at a distance, if you're not looking at the lens, people know. That's on a Joby little tripod thing that can grip onto trees and stuff. On top you've got the Rode VideoMic NTG and its little dead cat windsock. Inside here is a little Lexar card, 128 gig card. What's good about this Sony camera is that it has a flip out screen, which the Leica that I have doesn't have. Even the new Leica Q3 has a flip out screen, but not 
this way it doesn't flip out to the side you can't see it if you're in sort of selfie mode it's an inexpensive camera it's 6k sensor is down sampled to 4k the image quality is really good the face tracking is really really good and even with a little 3.5 aperture lens this is a 16 to 50 3.5 to 5.6 on an APS-C sensor you're still getting a blurry background and I'm only an arm's distance from that wall so that's pretty good you know if you wanted to get a 2.8 through and through lens that was wide enough to get this shot you'd be you know spending a thousand bucks or something like that so yeah pretty good camera certainly for people to start out with I would recommend this the other camera that I have and that's the one that I've used most on this channel is this that's the Leica Q2 it's on a small rig tripod it doesn't really move very often this tripod it just sort of stays there because that's where it needs to be this lens is insane it's a fixed lens the lens doesn't come off of the body so you never get any dust or dirt on the inside on the sensor it takes the dreamiest photographs I've always been a bit of a photographer I'm not the best photographer in the world but I'm not the worst but this thing makes me look like a pro and the video quality out of that thing is awesome as well I would say its face and eye tracking isn't maybe as good as the Sony stuff I think the Sony's a little bit faster but like is mostly a photo camera not a video camera from a video perspective the downsides to the Leica are that there's no inputs so you can't plug this microphone into it like I am now and shoot good audio straight onto the camera you just put the memory card in the battery in and go and shoot and that's it it doesn't have a flip out screen so you can't use it in selfie mode but it does have a cute little app which works pretty well it's a bit slow to connect to but you can use the app to control the Leica remotely which is handy but yeah the photographs out of this thing are divine attached to the main Elgato arm is also this little secondary arm you can get from Elgato it just screws on using this little turny knob and it's got a little rubber coating on the inside so it doesn't damage any bars and then over here you got this little thread that you can put your camera on and that brings us to this this is big <laughs> it's a big piece of equipment um, I should say the room is seven foot by seven foot so if you want to measure out like a space so you can figure out what this might look like in your office that's what you're looking for this is seven by seven and if I put the camera here the camera is now in the middle of the room in the middle of the wall if I'm working here well here yeah if I'm working that's here it's not far but it's not too close either so it does fit I should say I am five foot five not six foot five if you were taller obviously then that's going to be a lot closer to your head so tall guys and gals beware this is a newer newer I don't know how to say it c-stand this is rock solid like super solid I've used c-stands before but this is awesome you can also get one that has wheels on it if you need wheels good for a hard floor if you need to move it around this one doesn't need to move but it is solid you got this nice spongy thing to grip onto if I was to twist this and release the bar above let's say one of my kids came in here and twisted it and this was to drop there's springs inside of here that dampens it at the bottom so it's not just a hard bang and um, that's all the way up and down this at every point attached to this is the aperture light dome 2 the light dome is actually more expensive than the light and the stand combined but it is awesome I must say if I just put you like this this is 34 inches wide and there's velcro all around the inside here it comes with two diffusers this is a diffuser this is the thicker one so it's more diffused there's a thinner one and this is all silver reflective material on the inside there's another little piece of fabric which is another diffusion panel in there which sort of velcros in and then behind that is the light so that's what goes on in there it just velcros in nice and easy you also get this it's an egg crate or a grid and that velcros in on top so if you want the light to be more directional and less spill into the rest of the room you just want the light on you that's how you do it 
So that comes with it. You don't have to buy that separately. It's a really good umbrella. Umbrella? It's a really good softbox. And uh, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. Also, all the little bars, there's little metal rods, like an umbrella. There's little metal rods that run through this canopy and they connect into a big ring that's on the light. Those are fixed. You just flick a switch and the whole thing collapses. So this takes about 30 seconds to assemble. If you get one that isn't like this and it's manual, it can take literally half an hour to assemble. So think wisely. I mean, this one probably isn't gonna move anywhere. So I maybe didn't need to buy one like this. I maybe could have just got away with, you know, spend half an hour, build it once, throw it up. But I figured I do change the office around a bit. Maybe I'll move to the garage or something in the future. Who knows? So I bought that one. And I'm pretty sure this is the last thing I need to show you. This light is a newer light. It's got an output of 13,000 lumens, I think. I think it's a 150 watt light and it is really quiet. I'm always a bit dubious when things say ultra silent fans, but they are quiet. Um, they don't interrupt these videos. You probably can't hear them right now. And even if you did hear some of it, I always apply some voice isolation to the videos, which focuses on my voice rather than the background. That cuts anything that you would hear right out. It's a plastic enclosure that it's inside of, so it wouldn't be very durable potentially if you're traveling around and things. With the Aperture one, the same company that makes this uh, softbox, the Aperture version is like, you know, eight times the price of that light, but it's just a light at the end of the day. Um, sure, they have different brightnesses, different uh, noise levels from the fans, but I can't imagine the Aperture one is eight times quieter than this. It may be brighter, but I don't need it to be brighter. If you do need to travel around and go on location and things, you might want to look at the Aperture because this one, it just comes in a cardboard box, no frills. It's just <laughs> a normal plain cardboard box, nice and simple and cheap. The Aperture one comes in a beautiful big soft carry case with all the accessories and it's really hard and heavy and metal so think about what you need and spend your money wisely so i hope that was useful it's kind of useful for me as well because it's like a point in time snapshot of what i have going on to make these videos let me just show you what i used to start with and this is what you can use to start with one of these a smartphone this is the phone that i used to make my first two or three videos, maybe four videos, and maybe go and get yourself a little mini version of the Joby tripod. This is a Joby uh, iPhone tripod, and they come with these little stretchy things. Put it in there like that, and you set it up, and you're off. What I would recommend though, is if you are gonna go down this route to start making YouTube videos for whatever reason, I would recommend getting a little microphone like this. It has a pop filter that goes on top and there's a nice clip here as well. So you can clip that on to a shirt. Obviously, if you're wearing a black t-shirt, you won't really see this on the t-shirt. I genuinely can't see it at all on the monitor. You might be able to see it on YouTube full screen, but then you could tuck this down your t-shirt. The thing to consider is the length of the cable. So not super long, it's maybe the height of me, so six foot five. But you can get extension cables for it. So this is a big extension cable. This thing will go like the full length of my house. It's long. And you can also get the little adapter so it can go into the bottom of your phone, Android, iOS, whatever it is. Or you could just plug it into a computer and record using the recorder that's built into a computer. Having a lapel mic will be far better than just using the onboard mic that's on an iPhone or an Android phone. These mics are good, but they're not that good. And these are very affordable. Just for a point of reference, this is about 15 pounds, I think. The one on top here, the Rode VideoMic NTG is like 220. Pretty affordable, and it's a good boost in audio quality. Highly recommend. But that's all you need. An iPhone and a tripod, bare minimum. If you want to up the audio quality, get one of those little lapel mics. 
if you don't like the idea of a lapel mic, you could also use a little desk microphone, like a little USB microphone. You see people using those Shure SMB7 microphones and all the podcasts. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below. It's all on my website as well. I paid for all of these things myself, so I can personally vouch for them. I'm not being sponsored to promote any of these things. And if you've got any questions on any of this setup, feel free to leave a comment below. Hit me up on LinkedIn, whatever your jam is, and I will get back to you. See you next time. There we go.